Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to convert a decimal number to IEEE 754 single precision format, which means that we're going to take a decimal number like 45.45 that has a decimal point and convert it to a representation that uses 32 bits, hence the single and single precision. Uh, if you are taking CompoWorg in fall of 2015, you may recognize this problem because it's uh, number two on homework five. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we have to convert sort of the, the left-hand side of our decimal point to binary, so that's 45. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this is pretty standard procedure. You know, you've done this tons of times from, uh, I think it was homework one. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So 45 can be represented as 22 uh, times 2 plus 1. And then 22 can be represented as 11 times 2 plus 0. 11 can be represented as 5 times 2 plus 1. Uh, and then 5... So you, you get the idea here. Now, I'd really recommend using a pencil. You know, everybody makes mistakes. People always go to me and they say, Stephen, you're a TA. You really shouldn't be making any mistakes here. But, you know, nobody's perfect. Uh, I mean, if you get 100 on your exam, you're basically perfect. Like, you can go and, like, tell your parents, like, hey, mom, hey, dad, I'm a perfect student. But I mean, you have to be realistic. Like, you're not going to get 100 on the exam. Like, if you were going to get 100 on the exam, you wouldn't have to watch this video. Like, let's be real. Anyway, so we can stop now that we have uh, this quotient at 0. Uh, once this value reaches 0, not this one, this will never reach 0, and not this one, then we can go ahead and uh, have our conversion. So this is pretty standard. We're going to read our remainders from bottom to top. So we can write that down. So this is our representation of 45 in binary. Cool. So there's the sort of the front part before the binary point. Now we have to convert uh, the right hand side. So we're going to go ahead and convert 0.45, not to be confused with 45. Okay, this is a slightly different procedure, but it's nothing too crazy. So I wrote an equal sign, but I'm going to erase it because remember, pencils are important. So what we do is we take our value and we're going to multiply it by 2 a bunch of times and then take the value that we get and do it on the next line. You'll see what I mean if you follow along. So we'll take 0.45, multiply it by 2, which will give us 0 0.9. And I'd really recommend, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this a column. Uh, I'd recommend writing a 0 whenever you encounter one. Don't leave it off, because it'll help you read it in a bit. You'll see in a second. So we'll take 0 0.9, multiply that by 2, which will give us 1.8. And then when we copy 1.8 over to here, we're going to go ahead and ignore the fact that this is a 1. So we're going to just ignore this 1 and just copy over the 0.8 times 2 equals 1.6. And again, with the 1.6, we're going to ignore the 1. We'll just make it 0 0.6. And this is going to be uh, 1.2. Copy over just the 0.2 times 2 equals 0 0.4. And then we're just going to copy over 0 0.4 equals 0 0.8. Now, I could keep going here, and I would keep getting new or more and more values for our right-hand side, so like more and more um, like uh, bits after the binary point. But the thing is, is that this is just going to repeat a cycle starting with this. So if I were to copy this 0 0.8 over, I would put 0 0.8 here and multiply it by 2 and get 1.6. But you can see that we have a step that looks just like that right here. So what I'm going to find out is that this whole section, this whole section of 1100 0, 0 is just going to keep repeating because I'll put a 0 0.8 here and then it'll be 0 0.8 times 2 equals 1.6 and then this will equal uh, t like 0 0.6 times 2 will equal 1.2 and this will just keep on going forever. So we know that our right hand side uh, is going to be, and you read this from top to bottom because you're multiplying and it's, you know, it's, it's just kind of like the opposite of doing this. Uh, our right hand side is going to be 0, 1 one, and then we know, uh, if I write these other, did I get that right? Zero, one, 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 zero, zero. I know that this particular portion is going to go on forever, so I'm going to put a bar above it to, uh, to make note of that. So let's keep that in mind, and it ends here. Now what we need to do is we need to take this value, and we need to get it into a format that is sort of like scientific notation in decimal, uh, but in binary and in terms of powers of two. Uh, so what we're going to do, if you remember from scientific notation, uh, if we have a value like, you know, 
and we want to express this in scientific notation, we have to move this point to after the first digit. So this will become 1.234 times 10 to the second. So that's pretty easy. Now with binary, when we move the binary point around, we're not going to be multiplying by 10 anymore, we're going to be multiplying by 2. So we're going to take this binary point and move it over here after the first one to get this. So we're going to get 1.01101 1 and you just copy your whole bit string down. So let me make sure I got that right. Yep. And then we moved it five places to the left, so that's going to be times 2 to the fifth. So this is a useful representation for us because it gives us our mantissa from our IEEE 754 format, it gives us our exponent, and we know that our sign is positive because 45 is a positive number. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we've got our sign is equal to 0, and we have that our exponent is equal to 5, and our mantissa is, oh boy, just copy. There we go. So with these three values, we can now sort of insert this into our little, um, oh, and uh, one second, I'm going to go ahead and notate real quick that these repeat. So we're now ready to break this out into its component binary parts. So when we have uh, an IEEE 754 single precision floating point binary number, that was a mouthful, it looks something like this, and go ahead and ignore the lines on my graph paper, because this isn't going to be like to scale. So we have a sign bit, and then we have 8 bits of exponent, so I'll just write EXP. And then we have a mantissa, which is everything following this one, so all of these values, which can be represented with 23 bits. Now, one thing that's going to be interesting is that when we go ahead and insert our mantissa into this template, uh, our mantissa goes on forever. It is infinitely precise in binary, even though uh, in decimal, we can represent 45.45 with exact precision. This value is exactly 45.45. Uh, in binary, this is a repeating sequence. So this is kind of cool because we have a number in binary that cannot be represented precisely with a computer that can be easily represented uh, in decimal. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this in now. And uh, there is one special thing to note is that our exponent field has what's called a bias. So I'm going to go ahead and write this here. It is biased. Now we know that with 8 bits of information, the largest integer value that we'll be able to store will be 2 to the 8th minus 1, which is uh, going to come out to 255. Uh, and the thing is, is that our exponents are often going to, well, we're going to want them to be negative, uh, because that will allow us to represent small numbers. If you have a small number with scientific notation in your exponent, that's or if you, have a, if you have a negative exponent, rather, with scientific notation, you know that you're going to be representing a very small number. So what the creators of IEEE, or what, sorry, what the people at IEEE decided to do uh, was instead of using two's complement or some kind of representation like that, uh, they decided to simply bias the exponent. So in our exponent, if we see the value, like if, if we inspect the register and we see the actual value, uh, let's say all zeros, then we know that our value is actually going to be negative 127. Now this seems arbitrary at first until I do a few more examples. So if we have all ones, which is the largest unsigned integer that can be stored with 8 bits, uh, instead of being 2 to the 8th minus 1, 255, this is actually going to be um, 128. So basically we take the value that's actually stored in the physical register on the computer and we subtract 127 from it and that's our actual value. So now when we want to insert 5 as our exponent, or sorry 5 is here and there, uh, when we want to insert 5 as our exponent what we actually want to uh, put in here is 5 plus 127 because when we go from register to, well on paper, or to scientific notation, we want to subtract 127. But when we go from paper to uh, IEEE, we want to add 127. And the reason they chose uh, 127 is because it's, it's half of this value under integer division. So what we're going to do is we first have to take 5, and we're going to go ahead and say, I mean, because 5 isn't equal to 132, but we're going to say that it maps to 132 because of this standard. So we have to represent 132 in binary, which is pretty simple. So we have 128 plus uh, 4. 
That's easy. So here's the actual value that's going to go into our exponent. And then our sine bit and our mantissa are just going to go in there literally, except our mantissa, we're going to take these repeating bits and copy them as many times as we can to fit. And sometimes what people will do is they'll store, uh, they'll, they'll try to round up, and if you go to some online calculators, they'll also do this, but in, for the purposes of this class, just take repeating bits and copy them as far as you can go. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to copy our sine, exponent, and mantissa into our little template. So we're going to have 1 bit, followed by 8 bits, followed by 23 bits. So uh, just go ahead and copy these down. So I'm just going to copy the exponent bits. And then we'll copy our mantissa as far as we can go. And I'm going to count to 23 so that I can get as precise of a number as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and do 0, 1, 1. So we've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And we're done. That's the solution.